you ready? Okay, let's go. All right, so last demo of the year, last hand building technique that you will learn is slab construction. All these pieces I have right here are all slab built. Slab is working with sheets of clay. We're not coil building, we're not pod, we're not pinch pot building. It's all about building with these sheets of clay. So examples I hear, have here on the table are all slab built. This is a slab cylinder where you create a circle and you just create a geometric shape. Same thing here, they did a slab, little, this is a little narrow, cup and they pulled a handle and they did themselves a mug. So you can create a mug if you want with your slab piece with a handle. I would make it bigger than this. <coughs> uh, you can cut out holes. You can do a little reductive carving at the base to create a foot like this person did. They glazed it. Uh, it's a good thing. And you could do a slab box with a removable lid. And you see how they've done that. They've just not sliced it straight all the way around. They've created these little notches so it won't fall off at all. And to do a slab box, all you're going to be doing is building your, your square and then putting a top on it and scoring and slipping the top on your box. And then using a pencil or a needle tool, draw your line, your notches, and then an X-Acto knife to cut it off. And that's it. Uh, slab can be pretty creative. You can reductive carve like this person did around it. They cut like a wave so it looks like ocean, like an, uh, like a, like an ocean. You can use all these different textures. You guys have seen these all semester and wanted to use them. This is your time to use them on slab. I even kept my old license plate because it's got these numbers and letters that's raised that I can flip it and use a rolling pin, roll it, I stole this off somebody's Instagram, some potter somewhere in the country uses license plate numbers and letters on big coffee mugs and I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I have all these doilies. These guys here are all falling apart on me, these little silicone and um, impression mats. Uh, only thing with these, the center of this is really thick. So if you lay it down and roll it, you're going to might go all the way through your clay if it's real thin like this piece here is. Okay. I have these rollers with texture on it that all you do is press down hard and you roll your texture. You can go different directions. I'm a fan of the doily where you can lay a doily down, take your rolling pin, roll it and peel it off and you have a beautiful texture and it looks great with glaze and that's what was done with this piece here. See the te I like it with the texture. I, it, it just breaks over all the edges really nicely and you get a really cool design. And boxes don't have to be straight on top, you know, like, like this here. This one here was a demo I did last year and I just kind of cut angles in mine. I use it as a pencil box at my desk. So lots of different ways to go about these slab projects. When you do start your slab, you're going to roll out your slab. You're going to, you might have the texture of the canvas, just take your rib tool and smooth all that texture out. You won't like it. I won't like it. It's a craftsmanship issue and it doesn't take but seconds to smooth this out. I'm going to build a box. So I just cut out a piece of paper for the bottom of my box and all I'm going to, I'm going to create a base and two walls with this piece of paper. So all, all I'm going to do before I cut it is decide what do I want to use. Do I want a texture? Do I want to poke holes in it? I could go ahead and cut out my pieces after they're cut, draw this on and take an X-Acto blade and cut out my flowers. I could use it as a candle holder and light a candle and it has this beautiful pretty light that shines out of it. I could do that or uh, I could just do my texture and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use doilies because I'm a, I'm a big doily girl. So all I'm going to do is put my texture on first before you cut your pieces. Because if I have all my, my pieces cut out and I roll my rolling pin over my little cut squares, it's going gonna, it's gonna to misshape them and my box is not going to fit right. So I'm just going to create some pattern here. I'm not going to cover the whole slab with this doily because I like some of the negative space that goes in between. So 
So I'm just going to cut or roll here, excuse me. Slab's a really fun technique. I could slab build a box and coil the rest of it if I want it taller. Option you can do. I only give you guys just, a, there's so many other things you can do with clay, it's overwhelming. And I really, in intro, just give you the basics. But, okay. All right, so I've got my texture on. Now I'm gonna cut my walls. I'm gonna use the really bad area here, the base. I'm gonna take a needle tool and cut straight up and down. When I build a geometric shape, I put it on a piece of plywood so I don't have to worry about moving it and breaking it and misshaping it as I'm building. This clay has been laying out all second hour and it's perfect. The drier the clay, the better when it comes to slab. Then I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need this. And now I'm going to get two walls for the side. If you look, I can get two walls that's going to fit my base. These end walls are going to have to be longer because I've added on about an eighth of an inch on each side. So it's a little bit of measuring. But now I'm going to do a wall. I'm just trying to look on my clay to find an area I kind of like. Let's do that. For hoots and hollers. I always need a container. Straight up and down, no 45 degree angles in your cutting. And now I've got a wall that's going to fit right there. Now I'm going to cut out a second wall. And I'm trying to leave enough clay to get my next two pieces. Uh, Sydney last year built a box about this tall and about this square and then she put sections in the middle of it for her for her makeup brushes which I thought was pretty cool I've had some pretty neat boxes made all right so there's my second wall uh, Gavin can you give me the slip behind you please hopefully there's a brush in it I'm gonna set this aside Thank you, Gavin. So I've got, oh, that's a lot of slip. So now I need to score, score and slip every time. Slab building is a little bit more trickier. You're gonna put the wall alongside the side of the base. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna score the side of my wall. Fork is a lot quicker and easier. And then use the mother load of slip that we have here. I'm going to press that on real good, make sure it's lined up. I like to use a wooden slat, just like that. I'll even get a little slip and paint slip along this inside seam. And now I'm going to build the other wall. I also will smooth that clay from the seam where the wall meets the base, smooth the clay in. I don't care about the wall straightness right now because I'm still building. Oh, that's going to be the bottom. Same thing, score. You should build a, a, a slab piece easily in what, 45 minutes. Depends on how wet your clay is. If your clay is real wet, you need to dry it. Put it in front of the fan and dry it. Or get the drier clay that's over there. Y'all don't like the drier clay? Well, this you'll want the drier clay. Okay, press that in. Of course, the bigger the box, the harder it is to build, unless your clay is nice and firm, because if these walls won't stay like mine are staying right now. I'm gonna smooth that clay in at the bottom. And now I'm ready to build my two end walls. So this was my base and my two sides. If I hold this up here, it's gonna be a little too long. I'm okay with that, I can cut. Cutting is okay. So I'm gonna set that there. I'm gonna cut two more walls out with my base, even though it's too long. I'm cool with that. I'm gonna try to find a interesting bit of clay. It's kind of like 
building a gingerbread house. Have you guys have done that before? Nobody? Really? Mm -hmm. Not with your grandparent, grandma? You, you what? You're the only one. because I'm cool and hip. Gavin? Sorry. No, you're not. Not if you haven't done a gingerbread house. You could build a gingerbread house out of clay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got my end walls. I know they're too long. I'm okay with that because I can use an X-Acto knife or a fettling knife to cut it away. I'm going to find the interesting part of my wall. I like this area. I'm going to line it. Whoops. I'm going to score all three of these walls. I'm scoring blind here. And then I'm going to score the same place. I'm not going to worry about, I'm going to first line it up. I'm going to make a little line. I'm going to score where I don't need to cut. I'm going to slip. Line up my walls. Press them in. Pull some clay over the top seam. Push it in to sort of hold. I'm going to take my needle tool, make sure this wall is straight before I cut. I'm going to get rid of this excess. Voila! Magnifique! I'm going to smooth that in just to hold it. Get some slip. I'm going to slip the inside seam. And then I'm going to pull a little clay over here. I have to make sure these seams are good. Get a little water in my fingertip to clean them up. I might lose some of my texture where I'm smoothing. But I, I kind of planned it so it would look okay. Like this one over here looks really bad. This seam here. But I'm going to smooth that out with my finger with a little bit of water. And then I do the same thing. I'm going to score this side. And I don't like this side very much because it doesn't have very much texture on it. So that's the side I'm not going to use. I'm going to rough up one end, rough up the bottom. Mark. Score up this side. I'm going to slip. Once again, I'm going to press this in, line it up so the walls meet. Press those in really good. And then I'm going to trim off this excess. And now the rest of it's all going to be about smoothing all these connections. Using my finger, make sure my walls are straight. And then letting it dry, and then ultimately, I can do it. I can do it. I want to get on the bottom, because you see the bottom of my box? My seams are all showing, and I want to get rid of that. I'll just use a rib normally, and just pull some clay over those seams to, to add that extra support to hold this thing together, because I have so many different pieces of clay that are being held by very little and so your building and your craftsmanship is pretty critical for slab. And so now I don't have, it might be a little high or low. I can take an X-Acto blade and just trim it. I'm gonna use my finger, probably water, not slip to do my smoothing. I'm not real crazy about that corner. So I'm gonna work on making this corner look nicer. And then the bottom corners. I wanna round these corners off so there's no sharp edges. And I need to work on this area here, pull that clay over so it stays. And I built a slab box. And now I'll have something that's probably pretty useful. I use all my slab pieces. 
So if you want to do bigger, you cannot go this small. Harder to build, and I don't want them that small. I want them, this is the smallest I will let you build. Doesn't take that, I built this in less than 20 minutes. It's not that hard. Now it's all going to be about smoothing, and when you're done building, you're going to put that bag, your Dillon's bag, just loosely over it, so it doesn't just dry really rapidly, because if it dries rapidly, it's going to look like this. It's going to, it's going to bow on you, and it's going to be a mess. So you don't want that. I want the wall straight, and I want a nice geometric shape. Is there any questions about slab? You guys got it? That's the last technique you learn. Okay, thank you.